Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Um, so, it has been so long, so long since I've sat down to do a video. Um, let me start off by um, backtracking back to around Christmas. Um, so I had bronchitis for like two months. It was so crazy. <clears throat> I lost my voice for a long time and then once I got my voice back I still was having these coughing fits like if I tried to talk so I was like oh my goodness <laughs> so I finally like kind of got over that and I started feeling better in January <clears throat> and I, that's when things got really weird <laughs> ever since I had my kids um, my son is four my daughter is three I've been having really bad and frequent headaches and I mean I've like always had migraines like I just get headaches very easily I have lots of triggers and I know I've mentioned that before on my channel so I won't go into it too much but um, I've been seeing a neurologist for about a year and a half maybe for the headaches then they weren't under any kind of control or anything I've just been um, basically taking ibuprofen a lot of ibuprofen um, every day like for a very long time and I think that's what caused my problem but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself so the headaches really weren't any better I mean I was having headaches pretty much every day like I had some sort of pain every single day on my head and <laughs> I mean, I had all kinds of MRI and this and that, and nobody, I mean, he couldn't really tell me. He's just, I have sinus issues, and I have lots of triggers, like if the barometric pressure is too high or too low, I get headache and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, fast forward to my last appointment, which was last month. I went in to see my neurologist, and... Whenever you go there, the first thing you have to do is you have to sit down in this little in one of those little blood pressure machines that you sit down, you know, whatever they have them at like CVS, you know, one of them ones that you sit down and does it automatically. <clears throat> well, it always read high every time I went there, and um, I never really thought anything of it because electronic machines sometimes read high on me um, even though I've always kind of had low blood pressure or normal to low blood pressure so I never thought anything of it I was like oh well, whatever it's just not reading it right <laughs> and um, that particular day was very high it was like 185 over 110 and I was like what I'm like no it can't be so I, I just, I gave my number to the nurse. I'm like, it's just, you know, it doesn't read right on me. So <laughs> nobody questioned it. You know, we just kind of, oh, okay. And um, when I got home, I took my blood pressure myself because I have a stethoscope and a, a cuff. Um, I, I was a medical assistant for 20 plus years, so you think I would <laughs> know better. But when it comes to your own health, you get in denial, sort of. And that's where I was, but I went ahead and I took my own blood pressure. It was high. It was as high as it said at the doctor's office. So I was like, holy crap, not good. <laughs> Um, so I continued that day to take it, and I went back and forth in my head, should I, I didn't, I don't have, um, at least then, I didn't have a primary doctor, I haven't been to a primary doctor in several years, why, I don't know, but I just haven't gotten around to it, so <clears throat> I was like, okay, I'll find a primary doctor. Um, so I was going back and forth between, okay, I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow, either find a doctor or I'll go to the emergency room. I was just like all over the place. I didn't know what to do. Um, and then along with 
the high blood pressure, I was also and had, had been experiencing some chest discomfort. Um, that had been going on for a couple days um, before, prior to even knowing what my blood pressure was. And um, it just was like an ache here and going down my arm, like radiating down my left arm. And I was like, that was kind of troubling in the back of my mind. Like, well, that's not a very good symptom. But I was like, oh, maybe I just picked up my son wrong or my daughter and whatever. I was just in denial. <laughs> So um, I continued to have those issues, the, the discomfort, the headaches, the high blood pressure, the, it was just bad. It was bad. Like into the next day, I was still, I was taking, I took my blood pressure like first thing in the morning when it should be the lowest and it was still very, very, very high. And um, it was like 185 over 110, 112. And I was like, okay, this is, this is not good. So <laughs> I found a doctor who was right around the corner. Uh, went there, told him, experience, you know, what I, my uh, symptoms, took my blood pressure, it was still very, it was very high, and um, he basically told me that I could not go home, I was either, I either had to call someone to pick me up and take me to the, the emergency room, or they would call an ambulance and transport me there, but I was not to drive. So I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like late on a Friday. And um, so my mother-in-law came and got me and took me to the hospital. And oh my goodness. So they, they, were, they were waiting for me already. And the waiting room was so packed. I was like, there is no way. <laughs> like, I'm going to be here forever. And they took me right in. So I guess the symptoms I had and all. Um, didn't even need to be triaged, they just took me right in, and, um, the, they hooked me up to monitors, and my heart rate was, like, 200 over something, it was crazy, it was a crazy high number, and, uh, I guess there was a PA there that I saw first, and he was kind of freaking out, <laughs> so he's like, alright, we're gonna put you on a nitroglycerin drip, and um, apparently nitroglycerin is supposed to be a vasodilator. Um, so it's supposed to dilate the blood vessels, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that stuff is evil, evil. <laughs> it was so bad. If I would have known that one of the side effects was headaches, I would have said, take that stuff and shove it. <laughs> So they, they, it was bad. Like, I already had a, a migraine going on, and they gave me this stuff. And I, 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 the pain in my head was like someone hit me repeatedly, continuously with a big hammer and would not stop. My blood pressure went up higher because of it and they're like well we gotta give you more because your blood pressure's going up like i'm in a lot of pain <laughs> because of this stuff if you give me more i'm going to freak out it was so bad oh my gosh i was started getting nauseous from the pain and i was sweating from head to toe I, the sweat was just pouring out of me so bad um, and that kind of happened later, like later on and in, in the beginning when I was in the ER, they, they were just kind of doing tests and had a chest x-ray and that was fine. And, um, they were limited to what they could do because it was like late on a Friday, whatever, I don't know. But they pretty much said, I'm not going anywhere. They're, they were going to find, get me a room on the telemetry unit, the cardiac telemetry unit. And cause they had to do more testing and whatever. So well, as it got later, that's when the whole nitroglycerin fiasco happened and the horrible, horrific pain in my head and the sweating and the nausea. And I was like, just begging them please stop this and you know they gave me like Tylenol and I was like this isn't galping ah. 
So my blood pressure went down a little bit, like enough to where they felt comfortable to take me off of the nitroglycerin drip. And at the same time, they got me a room. So they cut the nitroglycerin off, got me up to a room, and I mean, the headache, I still had, kind of had a headache for a few days, but it wasn't as bad as it was. It was starting to uh, dissipate a bit. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, that whole night I was, like, they had to take my blood three times in the middle of the night, like every three hours to see if I had a heart attack. Um, they can tell by some blood enzyme. So they stuck me three times in the middle of the night to get the blood, and, and thank God it showed I did not have a heart attack or I was not having a heart attack. Um, so yeah, that, that was great, <laughs> but they, you know, were still concerned and because my blood pressure was still high and so they got me on two, uh, no, they got me on a blood pressure medicine. I take that twice a day and a medicine for my heart rate because my heart rate was just really high. So I have that one to regulate my heart rate and then a cholesterol medicine. Um, so they started me on that stuff the next day, and um, they get, got me an uh, echocardiogram, which is essentially a sonogram for your heart, and that um, that looked okay. They wanted to do a stress test, but because it was the weekend, they couldn't do it or something. I don't know. Um, a cardiologist who saw me the next day. Um, said that he they couldn't do it there at the hospital but as long as my blood pressure stayed okay that day they were gonna um, release me Saturday which was the next day 24 hours later and um, I was to have the stress test in his office so I was like okay um, yeah so my blood pressure was still was kind of high but it wasn't like as high as it was even on the blood pressure medicine, but um, so they felt okay to let me go. And so 24 hours later, I was released. And um, oh man, it was just crazy. Um, I did end up having the stress test, I wanna say, was it maybe a week later? I don't know, I'm not 100% sure. Um, there was a little bit of stress involved with that. No stress, stress test. <laughs> Apparently, my insurance company denied the stress test, and because it was a nuclear stress test, not a regular treadmill test, but it was treadmill plus uh, radiate. Like they inject a radioisotope into your bloodstream, radioactive isotope, and they do imaging, and then you exercise on treadmill, and then. They inject some more and they do more imaging and blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to be a lot better. But the insurance company denied it and I went round and round and round and round circles on the phone for hours trying to figure out what's going on. So essentially they said if, you're, if your doctor wants to fight it, he can call and do a peer to peer, a peer to peer, uh, whatever, where one doctor talks to the other doctor, and but they don't do that. The doctor won't do that. So I was like, great. So I had to pay cash for this test. I mean, I already have, let me just, this is a side note here. I already have, we pay $1,000 a month for insurance. $1,000 a month for the family. $5,000 deductible, individual, 10,000 family. And you're gonna, Make me pay a thousand dollars for this test that's not even going to go toward my deductible. Oh, so okay, that aside, we just figured, you know what, it's my health, let's just do it. I did it, and that test turned out fine. So, um, I did have a hospital follow up with the inter the uh, the primary doctor that um, admitted me to the hospital he wasn't there so I saw somebody else whatever I hate that when that happens but um, so everything status quo 
still on the medicines. Um, blood pressure seems to be good. Um, not perfect, but it's good. It's much better. And um, honestly, I feel better. Um, it's hard to explain this. And okay, since I since that happened, I haven't had a headache. Well, I've had a couple little little headaches that I took Tylenol and it went away. So yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I also have to take an aspirin every day, a uh, baby aspirin. And they gave me the little nitroglycerin pills. <laughs> I seriously have to be dying to take those. There's no way. But anyway, um, yeah, back to um, how I'm feeling. Um, I'm feeling better. Like, it has been a blessing in disguise, this whole thing, because... I don't know if it's because my blood pressure was so high. I was f feeling anxious all the time. I mean, I still have anxiety, but I just always felt kind of angry and anxious and just upset and just not myself. And, um, I, you know, that kind of transferred to the kids. The kids picked up on it, so I was having a lot of trouble with them because they're so sensitive um, to emotions and feelings that they picked up on it so they were having trouble and that was causing so much anxiety and anger and frustration and yelling and it was just a vicious cycle like crazy um, and they, I mean, I still don't have an answer as to why my blood pressure was so high, but I'm pretty sure, like, researching into it more, the ibuprofen, guys, if you take a lot of ibuprofen, be careful, because I really think if I were to keep taking it the way I was, it could have killed me. Like, it, it could be deadly. <laughs> my headaches were so bad, and the only thing that really helped was ibuprofen but I think that stuff was making my blood pressure go up which was giving me headaches and it was just like constant like snowball and um I was taking between 800 milligrams and 2400 milligrams a day and I would say probably for two at least two years I mean Every day, like I was buying the 500 <laughs> tablet ibuprofens and just taking them like candy. And um, you would think I'd know better being in the medical field for so long, but I just didn't. I didn't. I just knew that my headaches were bad, and I they gave they allowed me to function a little bit. <laughs> like I don't know, but now I haven't had. I haven't really had it. I mean, I've had a little bit of headaches because, like I said, I have a lot of triggers. I have right now. I have a sinus infection, so that causes pain. But I'm I'm only taking like Tylenol or Excedrin migraine, which is acetaminophen. It's the same thing. But I know you have to watch acetaminophen too because that can be deadly on your liver. I mean, kidney. No, liver. <laughs> um, ibuprofen is kidneys and heart. Um, so just oh my gosh. It's amazing how my attitude has changed, the way I feel has changed. I'm not as angry. I'm not as anxious. Um, the kids, we just get along so much better and we're communicating so much better. And um, it's just, it was a blessing. Like I know, like in my heart of hearts that God gives you lessons and teaches you and this was a teaching moment for me it was a scary one but I learned a lot from it and um I'm just not gonna take it for granted life for granted it's just crazy like how your outlook changes so um yeah that's I think like that's what's been going on I've been trying to incorporate some of my hobbies that I really love like um, let me show you what I'm making I am starting to crochet again and here's a I'm making a blanket for my hubby for his birthday I've made like all my family members blankets like everybody has a blanket for me 
and he doesn't have one. He's like, oh, I want one. So I'm like, okay, your birthday's coming. Let me make you a blanket. <laughs> anyway, I think it'd be really cool to do like crochet tutorials. To, I know that has nothing to do with beauty or motherhood, but hey, it's fun, right? Um, and it's very relaxing. So that, you guys, that's what's been going on. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, there's other crazy stuff happening too and in my world, but it's nothing I really need to talk about. This, I just wanted to kind of update you as to my health issues and what's going on and why I've been kind of MIA, but I really, I re and I, I know I say this all the time, I want to start making more videos, but I do, and I think my husband and I are coming up with a, a plan of how that could happen, because things are crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to get my son in school, my daughter in school, and he's going through some testing because um, I, I don't know how much I shared with you guys, but he is um, on the autism spectrum. Um, he's very high functioning, but he is on the spectrum. So um, everything's is just a little, there's a little challenge to things with him, but um, <laughs> He's awesome, and we, we do whatever we need to do because it's all good. So I just want to let you know I love all of you guys out there, and as always, God bless.